Uh, so let's look at this equation. Uh, so in some, in some bounded domain in, in RD. Okay, so the operator L epsilon uh, is, is given by negative divergence of X. Okay, we're assuming A is uh, elliptic and, uh, and periodic, one periodic, for instance. Okay, thank you. Uh, no smoothness is, is needed for, for, for today's lecture. Okay, so, um, so you look at this uh, equation, you, you actually see two scales. One is x, another is x over epsilon. This is referred as a slow variable and a fast variable. So there's a, the semester called a formal asymptotic expansion, two scale expansion. And that is you try to figure out the formula by expand the solution in a formal manner here. So you write u epsilon as u zero x, x over epsilon, okay? Assuming you have two scales here, that's the first term. And then you have epsilon u one of x, x over epsilon for the second term. And then you can have a third term u two x, x over epsilon. And you can continue, okay? So this is an infinite series. We're not gonna concern with whether it converges, it's, it's formal uh, expansion here. So, uh, and, and then we can assume that each of these functions, uj of x, let me call the second variable y. So whenever you see y, you should think of x over epsilon, okay? Is, say, one periodic in the second variable, okay? Because that's what you have in an in, 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 in equation of x over epsilon whenever you, the, the, uh, the coefficient is periodic in that variable there, okay? So here, you, then you put this uh, infinite series into this equation, and then you equal the terms with the same power of epsilon on the both sides. You actually end up with, you deduce that, that the first term actually does not depend on the second variable. It is independent of y, okay? This u zero actually is the limit of u epsilon, okay? And the second term appear in this form. So this is a chi j of y and du uh, zero, the same function here, and dx j here. And uh, this, this uh, chi j of y is one periodic, one periodic and satisfy the equation, then chi j, the output of L, I'm going to just uh, define, so the L here, I'm going to use the variable y, divergence of A of y, gradient in y here, the divergence also in y, is equal to negative L applied to the linear function yj. Okay, again, this is a formal, uh, 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 calculation, well, uh, unfortunately I don't have time uh, to, to actually show you this. Um, here I'm trying to do is I'm showing where this character is coming from. How do you find, real, how do you see that uh, uh, the character should satisfy that equation here. So that's how you, how, that's how you, uh, you got this equation here. So it's, uh, so what you have here, if you put this, if you put this on the one side, you end up with L of chi j plus y j is equal to zero in the whole space. So in other words, you can think this character chi j is a function which is used to correct the linear function. 
if you have a constant coefficient like Laplacian, the linear function is a solution, but if you have a variable coefficient operator, the linear function is not a solution. And this chi j, you, when you add to the linear function, it becomes a solution everywhere in the space. And so that's what we're looking for here. This chi j is also one periodic, and in order to fix the one, I also ask that it, uh, that the mean that the, uh, 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 each uh, uh, periodic cell is zero here. Okay, so in the periodic setting, the existence of corrector is a simple matter, but it's actually one of the most difficult part if you're going beyond periodic setting, uh, even to the almost periodic case, quasi periodic case, the existence of correctors is, 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 is one of the most difficult problem here. So here is not a problem. How do you find the corrector? Uh, show the existing uniqueness. You simply set up a bilinear form on the torus. So H1, uh, so in, 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 in the notes I, uh, I use Y. So Y is just, uh, you can think this is a, a RD modular the lattice and this is uh, the torus here, okay? So the H1, H1 torus or just uh, H1 with periodic uh, conditions here. And then you, you uh, uh, and then you simply uh, using lax milgram to, uh, To solve a problem, so you, you define B, let's say. Oh yeah, the B, B is already defined there, uh, phi and psi, to be the integral. Uh, this is the average actually here, it, you don't need that. Uh, y, uh, A, the gradient of phi dot gradient of psi and dy. And you solve, uh, and you use Lax milgram theorem uh, to solve uh, this equation uh, B chi j uh, psi is negative B y j and psi. And so this is true for for any psi in H1. H1, uh, H1 torus there, okay? So the ellipticity gave you a coercive uh, a bilinear form and uh, the right-hand side gave you a, uh, a bounded linear functional on H1 on the torus. Okay, so one, uh, so one, uh, Remark here is that uh, uh, is that if you if you have uh, a matrix satisfy uh, this condition, say uh, D D of uh, say X I, I'm sorry Y I A I J is zero, the, the index i is summed. Uh, so if uh, then you, the character actually is zero. Uh, that is because uh, you can see the, the right hand side actually give you zero there. So in this case, if you, if you have a matrix, each column is divergence free, uh, you, you, you don't have a correct, character is identical equals zero there. So, uh, in a lot of cases, that's a simple case there. Okay. The other thing I want to uh, mention here is that, so here I already say that uh, if you uh, use a variable y here before the scale, uh, this becomes a, a solution if you add yj to the corrector as a function of y. You can rescale this. Uh, to see that that uh, 
xj plus epsilon chi j of x over epsilon is a solution in the whole space. Okay, so, so if you look at this uh, original operator L sub epsilon, you have a linear function. You add epsilon times chi j of x over epsilon to it, it becomes a solution to the, uh, to the, uh, to the output of L epsilon, and this will be useful for us later on because you'll, you'll see that uh, it somehow indicate as far as the regularity is concerned, uh, the best you can do is Lipschitz. Uh, so we're actually going to prove Lipschitz estimate uh, in lecture three and four using two different approach there. All right. Okay, so these are the co uh, definition of correctors. So once you have corrector, we can introduce a homogenized uh, coefficient or effective coefficient. And uh, in the same time, that will also give you the uh, homogenized operator or the effective operator. So the definition is that the AIJ hat, which is the coefficient uh, for L0, is given by the average of AIJ, first term. In the second term, you have AIK, the derivative of KIJ in YK. The index K is summed from 1 to D. And if you, you can actually write this in a bilinear form. So it's a B of uh, YJ plus KIJ, uh, comma YI plus KI there. Okay. So you can see one simple observation is that uh, here the, the coefficient for L0 is, is not a simple average of the coefficient for L epsilon, but rather it's kind of a nonlinear average because the second term Invo involve the corrector, it's multiplied to the coefficient here. So this is a nonlinear term here. Although the first term is just the average of AIJ, but you need a second term to give you AIJ hat here. That is uh, the uh, homogenized uh, coefficient or effective coefficient. And uh, so the, the first theorem, uh, is, uh, which is proved in, in the lecture notes, is that this uh, L0 is elliptic, actually with the same lower bound. So AIJ hat, KCI, KCI, KCJ, this is also summed. Uh, the mu is the same constant for, for ellipticity elliptic, constant for A, and uh, but upper bound may be different. So upper bound here, you have uh, mu one, with some constant which only depend on mu and the dimension. And so that's the, uh, that's the ellipticity here. So that's the, the first, first term there. All right. Okay, so uh, this is the main theorem we're going to prove today. <clears throat> so this gives you the homogenization of the Dirichlet problem. So you're looking at a matrix which is elliptic, periodic. Uh, you have a bounded Lipschitz domain, and you, so you solve a Dirichlet problem, a typical one you see in, in Avis. Uh, so right hand side is H minus one, the dual of H one zero. Uh, the boundary data is H one half, taking in a sense of trace, H one half uh, trace of H one. Uh, so uh, we know the solution exists and is unique by the lax milgram uh, for any given epsilon. Okay, actually you don't need a, a periodicity condition. So what, with the periodicity condition, what the sum says that as epsilon goes to zero, u epsilon has a limit weakly in H1. Actually, you can see a little bit more. The flux also converge weakly. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not right. This would be uh, L2, weakly in L2. 
Okay, uh, second line. The first line is weakly in H1, but this is a weakly in, 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 in L2. And finally, the limit function U0 is a solution to the homogenized problem, which is uh, for L0, same domain, same F, same right-hand side, same boundary data. It's just the operator change from L epsilon to L0. And L0 is the one we just introduced, the homogenized or effective operator. Okay, so we know that uh, this uh, A hat, the homogenized coefficient is elliptic, so this uh, 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 this boundary value problem has a unique solution, uh, U0 there. Okay, so that's the qualitative theory uh, for the Dirichlet problem. Okay, the same thing, same, same, same can be said uh, for the Neumann problem. That is, let's say you, you, you uh, again, the assumption is the same. A is elliptic, periodic, and uh, omega is bounded, Lipschitz, and you solve a Neumann problem. Okay, so here I write this in maybe a slightly different form because the right, the, the right hand side has to be in, uh, in the dual of uh, some, each one. So let's just uh, try to avoid that just using F plus the divergence of G. Both capital F and, little, and capital G are L2 functions. And you write in a boundary condition in this form. This is a variational core normal derivative, uh, new epsilon. Uh, and uh, I did not put on the board what is the core normal derivative we're using here. So du epsilon, d new epsilon is the normal times A, the coefficient, uh, actually this is the flux, that's the definition. So, so the, the, the core normal derivative uh, depends on the, on, the, on, on the operator. Uh, so this is a quite different from the Dirichlet problem here. Okay, so again, uh, U epsilon, well, here to fix the solution, let's assume that uh, the mean of uh, U epsilon is zero in omega, and uh, the, the, uh, this is also, the second line should also be in L2, uh, so U epsilon has a, a limit weakly in, in, uh, in H1, and therefore strongly in L2, and uh, U zero is, is a solution to this homogenized problem here. So as I said, uh, the core normal derivative depends on the operator. So du zero, d nu zero is the core normal derivative associated with this operator L, L zero. So in other words, what you have here is that uh, d nu zero, d nu zero is m dot a hat gradient of u zero there. Okay, so I, I see I have to hurry up. Uh, let's see, we'll, we'll be one, two. All right. So I'm gonna write down a, a few uh, theorems without a proof. You can find the proof in electron nodes and get to the main step of the theorem of, of, of the homogenization I have on, on the screen here. So the first one, so f the first uh, result I need is, uh, is the following. So I'm gonna write this in B a sequence of one periodic, one periodic functions and assume that, that uh, the sequence L2 norm is uniformly bounded and the average of HL has a limit C0 here. Okay. 
And then I'm going to choose a sequence epsilon L goes to zero. Then the conclusion, conclusion is that if you look at H L, and then you rescale as X over epsilon L, and this actually has a weak limit, which is the same constant I have there, weakly in L2. Uh, omega here only need to be bounded. So in particular, if you only have one function here, if all the functions are the same, then uh, if you have, then this guy will simply weakly converge to its average weekly. And that's a consequence of this one here. Okay, that's one theorem I will need. The second theorem uh, is commonly referred as a DV curl lemma, which will be one of the exercises for you this afternoon. DV curl lemma. So here I'll take, I have two sequence UL and a VL be two uh, bounded sequences in in L2 omega with values in RD. So there are vector field on omega here. And suppose that one uh, they have weak limit. VL weakly converge to in L2 of omega. Okay. So this problem, I mean this this lemma is trying to solve the problem that when you multiply two weakly converging sequences, it may not conv converge weakly. And here is the condition which will guarantee the product also converge weakly. So the condition is that uh, one of them, let's say the first one, is curve equal to zero in omega, and uh, the second condition is divergence of VL uh, converge to F. This has to be strong, strongly in H minus one. Okay, one has curve zero, another has uh, divergence convergence. So under these assumptions, the product, the product of uh, UL and VL converge weakly. Well, not just saying that here is u dot v phi dx for any uh, phi in c0 infinity of omega. Okay, so u dot, ul dot vl converge in some sense weakly when you multiply to a test function there. All right, so these are the theorem I will need in order to prove the, uh, the May theorem I have there. All right. So let me just going back to uh, just, just concentrate on, on the DD class problem here. Okay, so um, here is the theorem. Um, actually, here for the later purpose of compactness method, I'm going to have to consider. I'm going to consider a sequence of matrix, which satisfy the same condition. I'm going to call M of mu. What is M of mu? I forgot to define earlier. It's just a class class of matrices which are elliptic and periodic. Okay, with the constant, with a elliptic constant mu there. 
Okay, so uh, let's also take uh, F L in H minus one of omega, and uh, suppose that you have a solution to a, a divergence of A L X epsilon L gradient of U L equal to F L in omega. Here you realize that not only I put uh, uh, epsilon L on a, uh, on, a, uh, on, a, on a denominator of the variable, but I also let the matrix A itself varies in the same class. Okay. And further, let's say F L converge strongly to F in H minus one and UL converge weakly to U in H1 and AL hat. So each AL uh, will have its own effective coefficient, I'm going to denote by AL hat, has a limit. It's a constant, so whatever, it's a, it's a limit. I'm going to also a constant matrix. Satisfy the same condition, okay? Then, the, the conclusion is that uh, A of L, UL, converge to A naught, grade of U, weakly in, in L2 of omega, okay? And once you have this, because each of these divergence uh, equal to FL, and FL converge strongly in L2, and this, this line will actually imply that the limit is a solution to this uh, uh, equation in omega. And here you see that we're here, we're not going to concern with the boundary data. The boundary uh, value does not enter into the, uh, into the play. And this theorem therefore apply, can be used to prove both Dirichlet and Neumann problems, homogenization. Professor? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, as L, all these are limit are taken as L goes to infinity. A L hat is a constant matrix. So you have like for each L, you have a different scale. Go to so you have like different scale like uh, epsilon L, uh, epsilon L J something. Uh, no. So A L is 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 in this uh, class. Uh, any matrix in a class has a hat. Which is a constant. Yeah, the way to understand that hats mean that when you have the scale getting smaller and smaller, so therefore for every L, you, you have to have. Uh, well, I don't. We don't need to uh, concern that because here, just looking at the matrix itself, and you see that uh, uh, the A hat is uniquely defined whenever you have an A. Yes, you're right. So as each each if you goes to zero, uh, it goes a hat. But here. I'm going to, for the, comp for the purpose of compactness we method, we're going to use uh, lecture three, we will allow both to change. Okay. Yeah, the matrix is changing, the epsilon is also changing. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, uh, so how do we prove this? So in order to prove this, so I'm going to call this star. So it, it suffice to show that uh, if you have a subsequence, if you have a subsequence, I'm going to call U L prime is a subsequence. Such that, and this guy has a limit. 
which I weakly say in L2. For some, for some h, then the limit has to be a naught times the gradient of u. So whenever, so in other words, whenever you have a subsequence which converge, then it has to converge the same thing. And therefore, you can deduce that the whole sequence has to converge the same thing. For otherwise, you can produce two subsequences which converge to two, two different, uh, two different, so that's all, uh, two different limits. So that's all we need to do here. Okay, so uh, without loss of generality, let me just uh, assume the whole sequence converge actually. Gradient UL converge to say H weekly for some H. The goal is to show that this H must be given by A naught gradient of U here. Okay, so for this, we will uh, use the uh, DV core lemma as well as that theorem on the weak convergence of periodic functions. So what you do is that you consider the following uh, identity. Okay. Gradient of UL dot, the gradient of, here I have uh, XK, just the linear function, then I have a epsilon K, then I have a chi K L, I have a star, I'll explain what the star is, X epsilon L, then times phi, that's a test function. Phi is any test function here. So you can certainly remove, remove this matrix to here. So gradient of UL dot A star L of, star just means the adjoint, uh, the gradient of XK plus epsilon K chi k l star x over epsilon l uh, phi dx. This is a simple identity. I haven't proved anything. I just move the matrix A from here to here. It becomes adjoint here. So what is the x l star? This is the, this is a, uh, a notation is not very good. Uh, so this is the corrector, corrector for, for A, L, star, the adjoint matrix. The adjoint matrix satisfies the same condition, and so you can also define the uh, correctors. 